My name's Jordan, this is Modern Goldsmith, and today we're gonna be turning this yellow gold ring white gold. And by turning it white gold, I don't mean actually turning it white gold, rather, I'm gonna be doing rhodium plating to it today. And rhodium plating is basically a form of electroplating, where a thin layer of rhodium, white rhodium, will go over the yellow gold ring and turn it bright white. To begin, I'm gonna take the ring over to the polisher. The rhodium really likes to stick to a nice, clean, polished surface. It also makes sure that everything is nice and even, and you don't have some spots that look dull and other spots that look shiny. We just want everything to look nice and uniform. To show a nice comparison, I'm also going to be rhodium plating this white gold ring. Rhodium is usually put on white gold, not on yellow gold. That's because white gold will start to yellow after a little while. By plating it and polishing up, you restore that bright white look. There's bound to be a little bit of old rhodium on this white gold ring. So I take it to the polisher and I run it under this wheel. The wheel will remove the old rhodium. After the rings have been polished, I take them over to my ultrasonic cleaner and I drop them in the basket. This ultrasonic looked pretty dirty the last few videos, so I cleaned it just for you guys. I hope you enjoy. The ultrasonic cleaner works perfectly to remove all of that polishing compound off of the rings. In order to rhodium plate, you want your rings to be as clean as they can possibly be. Part of the cleaning process that is extra vital is steam cleaning. I like to shoot underneath the stones to make sure any oils or dirt is removed from the ring. To achieve the best result, I do a three-step process. First is electrocleaner. Second is activator. The third step is the rhodium itself. Rhodium is actually an element on the periodic table of elements that's been liquefied. This beaker is 600 milliliters and I'll fill the rhodium almost to the top. You're not going to want to drink any of this stuff. It could quite possibly lead to your demise. And this is the electroplating machine or rectifier. This controls the current, which will be used in the electroplating process itself. The three steps I mentioned earlier, you can see them in their individual beakers here. We have the electrocleaning on the left, the activator or acid in the middle, and the rhodium plating on the right. This is a titanium anode. It's dropped down into the beaker with the rhodium, and basically the positive line from the rectifier runs down and attaches to this. And that allows current to run through the rhodium and to plate onto the ring. We talked about the positive side of the rectifier. This is the negative side, which is attached to a piece of gold wire. This gold wire is then used to attach to the ring. positive alligator clip is attached to the anode in the electric cleaner, the rectifier is turned on, and the voltage is turned up. I then dip the ring into the electro cleaner. You can pretty much infer from the name of this step that the ring is being cleaned right now. This step removes any lingering oils, dirt, or anything else that could contaminate the rhodium. After the electro cleaner, I dip it in distilled water for five seconds. And then we come over to the activator. This step activates the metal and pretty much gets it ready to receive the rhodium plating. After that, I'm also going to dip it in distilled water for another five seconds. 
turn down the voltage. I also need to transfer the alligator clip from the anode of the electroplater over to the anode of the rhodium plating. I then dip the ring into the rhodium bath. I feel like I should be saying something smart and scientific right now. So let me quote the number one source for such words, Wikipedia. Electroplating is a process that uses electric current to reduce dissolved metal cations so that they form a thin, coherent metal coating on an electrode. In this case, that thin metal coating is rhodium. To describe the process without using science, it just looks really cool. The electric current kind of fizzes off of the anode. I love that juxtaposition between the calm rhodium underneath and the fizzy current above. After plating the yellow gold ring for 30 seconds or so, I bring it out to reveal a white ring. Not actual white gold, but a thin layer of rhodium which has been electroplated on the surface. It's important to note that this rhodium plating will wear off. It really depends on the ring bearer on how long the rhodium lasts. Sometimes people can stretch it for a few months or even a year. For yellow gold rings, a lot of times I'll go back and plate it again, just to make the coating extra thick. I'm now going to rhodium plate the white gold ring. I zoomed out a bit so you can see the whole process. Start with the electric cleaning bath, then over to the distilled water, over to the activator, down to distilled water again, I bring the terminal lead over. Electro cleaner and rhodium plating usually perform a bit better when they're heated up to around 100 degrees or so. I'm not showing it in this video, but a lot of times I'll use a hot plate to heat up each beaker individually. Without touching the ring with my fingers, I'll grab it with the tongs and I'll bring it over to the steamer. This will remove any lingering rhodium. When electroplating, especially rhodium, it's important to stay safe. A big part of safety in this case has to do with air ventilation. I have this solder pier machine, which basically will filter the air and make sure that none of those vapors and fumes are reaching my lungs. This gate open and closes to give it more power. When I'm not rhodium plating, I'll usually keep it closed. On the other side, I have this kind of snake-like hose that I can aim right down over my soldering. That way when I'm soldering a ring closed, I don't inhale any of the solder fumes. And there we have it. Both the yellow gold ring and the white gold ring side by side. Can you tell which one is which? Obviously, we know which one is which in this situation, but it's really cool that they both look bright white. One thing to note about rhodium plating, however, is it has a hard time getting down into the nooks and crannies of certain rings. If it's just a plain band, a lot of times you can't tell that it's been rhodium plated at all. But if you look here, deep down, if I zoom in with my camera, you can see little bits of yellow. If you truly want your ring white gold, I actually don't recommend rhodium plating it, rather just having the ring custom made in white gold using your diamonds and materials. For the white gold ring, you can see that things turned out a bit better. There's no yellow spots at all, things look bright white. This is kind of like a refresh of the ring itself. Just check out the before and after here. Now let's see the before and after of the yellow gold ring. Before, definitely yellow. After, it could pass as a white gold ring. If you have any questions at all about rhodium plating, electroplating, or maybe turning a yellow gold ring white or a different material, go ahead and let me know and I'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching.